right. Did you guys get your hands on the stress test at all? I did not, unfortunately. I, you know what? As soon as I tried to go in for the, uh, the little, you know, sign up, it immediately said it was done. And I was like, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, shit. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. But I am enjoying watching some of the stuff that's happening on, uh, on YouTube. So you can see a lot of people are stress testing it out as you will. I was right. watching uh, Javizi yesterday, and he was actually teaching some guy how to, you know, play a fighting game. The guy had no idea what he was doing, and he actually went through, slowed him down, showed him some fundamentals, showed him how to two and one. And the guy started pulling it off. I was like, now that's what I'm talking about. Wow! So, so that was Javizi. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, shout out to him. That was awesome. So uh, just a, a few things. We'll just. Uh, I'll kind of host it off and, you know, say who's with us. And from there, I kind of touch base on, I'm pretty sure it was episode five where we discussed um, Mortal Kombat Deception and, you know, the clan days and all the competitive scene. Because actually from that podcast was kind of how, I think it was really Gurchap that uh, mentioned, um, he mentioned really the most players I think out of uh, between M2 Dave and I. Um, Gertrude just remembered like so many more. And uh, yeah, sure. yeah, he did. When I listened to that, I was like, how in the hell does this guy remember all these people? I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, it, it was it was a ton. And uh, yeah. so when he, he m- mentioned you in a thread, and then he mentioned about the whole E3 thing, that I think he was kind of, Sunwell was kind of crapping on the, the time and the scene, and he just kind of gave him some real deep history that hopefully made that person, you know, realize that, hey, actually these things that we did before mattered, you know, and that's kind of how we're here now. So That is exactly correct. I mean, it started basically with a lot of us online. You know, there was really yeah. no big scene for, at the time at least, for UMK3 at the arcades that I went to. Nobody played it. Right. You know, it was like sitting there. The only games that were being played were like, you know, Third Strike, the Alpha Series, things of that nature. But we were playing that game online, and it was fun as hell. It was, so, yeah. But it had its flaws, which is the reason why the community got together and started doing all that. So that, you know, and I had a ticket to get to, to E3 because I was, you know, in the gaming, you know, retail industry. So we got to go. And I basically said, you know what, guys, I got I to gotta weigh in. If you want to have some feedback, let's put it together. And that's how we did it. Was yes. This for, was this, so interrupt, was this, no, for MK, was this for MK Deception? Was that for MK Armageddon when you went there? It was actually for Arm, uh, it was for Armageddon. Reason why is because that's we were already, yeah, that's what I thought. yeah, we had already been well versed in Armageddon. I mean, uh, in Deception, because we, we knew what the flaws were. People Ooh. came up with the secret jutsus to try to get out of 50 50 throws. You know, all the free throws and shit. Yeah. So there was all this stuff that we had as workarounds, but we knew that the game needed to have some more meat and potatoes, so to speak, to it. Yeah. So this is the reason why a lot of people came up with all these, hey, if we had this, if we had, you know, wake-up attacks, if we had, you know, a, a counter system, something to help us out with this. So a lot of people, I mean, there was a shit ton of, of data that we compiled you know, and it, it wasn't just me doing it. And, you know, I don't, I don't deserve all the credit for what happened. I was pretty much the courier service. I added my feedback, but it was the community that came together that put this together. That's awesome. You know, so that's that's how I look at it. So uh, real quick, I'm going to pause this because I don't want to get too much into it without, like, officially starting. I mean, I'm, I've been recording, but I want to make sure that we're uh, good to go. So, Chap, are you with us now? I just joined, yes. Okay, so... Um, uh, Okay, hang on a second. Okay, so we're good now. Um, I'm, I'll am i probably put actually both those two pieces together because that was really awesome what you said about JBZ and, and whatnot. So uh, anyway, so to, to start, again, uh, welcome everyone to uh, Testimony Podcast episode actually eight now. Uh, we have a, with us um, Storms here, and I have uh, M2 Dave and Gurchap with a very special guest, Master Malone, who we were bringing in um, kind of specifically, uh, not only just to, to talk to him and get to know him, because me personally, I've never spoken to Master Malone before, but I've known him since kind of the online persona since 2005. And with our episode five that, you know, Gurchap, M2Dave, and myself 
kind of deep dive into like the Mortal Kombat Deception days, the um, the Clan days. Uh, we basically touched base with some of the uh, the th- accomplishments that Master Malone helped with, and just and he's one of the guys that's still around. So I, you know, not all of us from that era are still around. So it's very special to us, like personally, to still have these folks around. And um, like Quick Thirteen Twenty, for example, he he's he's back in the scene, and it's so cool to have him back. But anyway, for Master Malone, um, how are you doing, sir? Doing well, guys. Thank you very much for having me on. This is an it's an honor, actually. That number one, I've been mentioned, and number two, to to be a part of this community. So, um, like you said, I've been a part of the community for since pretty much the beginning. Don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, definitely love the way that the, the community is shaped up from the time that, well, at least our time back in the two thousand four era, all the way till today. It's it's vastly different. Uh, considering that everything's now more esports driven right. uh, and focused on the fight at the FGC, uh, whereas before in the beginning it was all online and we kind of kind of stirred that pot and started creating what we see today uh, from those humble beginnings. So yeah, I'm definitely glad to be a part of this. This is awesome. So with you mentioned 2004, so what was kind of and you might have the kind of like the same classic story as everyone, but what kind of got you into Mortal Kombat to begin with? Uh, to begin with, what got me into it was basically uh, we, I was living in Pacoima at the time, and I had a little buddy come over and said, "What? Did you see this game?" And I was like, "What game?" He goes, "Man, some ninja just ripped some other guy's head off." I was like, "What?" And I was like, "Okay, let's go check it out." So we go to this gas station. I see this machine there. I'm like, "What in the world?" I'm seeing this Sub Zero character playing against somebody using Kano. I didn't see the Sub Zero head rip, but I saw this guy pull off. The <laughs> And I went, oh, shit. I'm like, is this legal? <laughs> so I was like, this looks kind of cool. And, you know, I was always into Street Fighter. I love fighting games. But that one actually, it, it intrigued me. Because, number one, it reminded me of the old school 70s Kung Fu uh, kung fu flicks, right? So it had that kind of sound effect where you hit somebody. It was like this tremendous splashing sound effect when you hit them. It, it, drew, it drew me in. Not just because it was violent. It's because it reminded me of that. And then I saw Raiden who looked exactly like the guy from Big Trouble in Little China, one of the guys that comes down with a lightning bolt. I went, oh, man, that's the guy from Big Trouble in Little China. So it, it grabbed me right there. Once that, once I saw that, I was in. So, so that's what, kind of, what, uh, what game was that? Was that like MK2 or UMK3? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What, what, what arcade system was that at the time? Oh, that ar- what, the arcade system? Was, oh, it the like, arcade. was it like MK2 or which, which game? Oh, it was actually MK1. Was oh, original. awesome. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we're going back in the day. I mean, I've got some years on me, so I remember, <laughs> I remember everything, guys. So, yeah, I, I had a, uh, I had MK1 on the Game Boy. So what, what system was this that they were playing on at a gas station? Well, actually, it was an arcade. Oh, it was, was it? Machine. Okay. Yeah, it was wow. a tried and true arcade machine. So I had, I'd say that this was back in 1991-ish, two, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I think it was 92. 92, yeah. So, it had to be 92. But I, I'll definitely never forget that. thought it was the most amazing thing I'd seen. And visually, it looked pretty sharp because the, the digitized graphics, it wasn't cartoony looking. Right. So, that's another thing that got me. I was like, okay, this looks good. It looks real. Yeah, so. just to give maybe the younger players a little bit of context. I mean, back in the day, there was no internet. So. Yeah, <laughs> so, YouTube. So, That's yeah, true. Or, or YouTube, for that matter. So if you knew how to perform Kano's Fatality or Scorpions, like you were the cool kid, you know, because yeah, that information yeah. was so, you know. Besides, remember, there was no practice mode like there is now. So you really couldn't, you know, test this out very consistently, you know, especially in an arcade setting, you know, because you have to obviously spend money. That's so absolutely was, correct. So it was not, you know, it, there it, it was something special, I would say. You know, it, it wasn't just with MK, you know, you had your Street Fighter as well. But, you know, for MK especially, there's always, like, something mysterious. You know, it's Reptile in the game. Like, who is, you know, it's just, it's it was very, very, uh, had like a, you know, mysterious aura about it as far as, you know, the game, you know, and obviously some of, like, the, the inputs for the special moves and, you know, the fatalities. Sure. Exactly. And another thing to add to that is the people who did know those fatalities and specific moves, they weren't always willing to share it with you. Yeah. They wanted to no, remain yeah, yeah, sure. the cool kid that knew all that stuff. So 
if you saw somebody pulling off a fatality, you're like, hey, how'd you do that? And they just turn to you and they look at you and smile. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, you okay, you little bastard. Yeah, so that's, hey, that was the thing. Hey, guys. Um, uh, first of all, uh, Malone, is very good to have you here with us. Um, oh, thank you. So I wanted, to say, I wanted to say that I imagine if it was hard for you guys here in the U.S., imagine in a third world country like Guatemala, we had one arcade for like the entire town. Wow. So all, all the kids, were, I remember all the kids there, the two playing, and then the one that I was going to play next had to wait with his coin right at, at the arcade, like meaning that he was next. And that uh, we used to we used to have fights because somebody else wanted to take the, the that is, you know. So it was always <laughs> it was some like like very very cold days, yeah. That uh, sounded a little yeah. dangerous, man. That sounds a little, uh, <laughs> a little rough there. <laughs> and again, fights were happening anyway, regardless if it was the only arcade in town or if it was Family Fun Time Arcade. I got stories for that, but <laughs> that's for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, uh, uh, Dave, uh, Chap, how you guys doing? Good, good. Doing, uh, doing all right. Yeah, I, I'm glad we we got the the time, the perfect time for all of us. You know, it's hard. It's hard yeah, for. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. Yeah, especially yeah, the because, time I mean, change like, or the uh, yeah. time difference. True, true, true. And my weekends are are very very busy too. So, but I, I'm glad we made it. Oh yeah. Very, very good. We made it. Yeah, it I was gonna say. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It took us only two weeks, but I, but we made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's true. This actually was supposed to happen, uh, well, like group chat said, like two weeks ago. But and again, just adjusting all the schedules and uh, and everything. So I'll say it again later on. But thank you everyone for your time. Um, it's it's not easy to get this coordinated, but it's 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 a hell of a lot of fun. And um, so now that we heard a, a little bit about um, your beginning as Master Malone, so maybe. Before we get into like the meat and potatoes of your E3 experience, kind of walk us through like your experience, you know, through the years of either, you know, the MKO days, because we were all in there back in the day, and then also just your games from like, did you ever play MK4? Did you ever play D- uh, D- uh, Deadly Alliance, UMK3? I'm kind of jumping all around there, but, uh, sure. you know, how, how did the latter go for you? So actually, it's a pretty good point. So it actually started with me buying Deadly Alliance because when I heard that it was coming out, I was pretty blown away. And the reason why I was blown away is because uh, I had MK4 Gold on the Dreamcast, which I don't know what you guys think of it, but it wasn't that good of a game. It was something that we played because I liked Mortal Kombat, but I acknowledged the fact that it wasn't all that good. However, you know, it had been a long time since that game was released because Dreamcast came out, what, 90, 99. And that game was one of the release titles on it. And I was playing it and I was like, this game, it tried so hard to become what UMK3 was, but they missed the mark on so many different levels. Every character pretty much had the same combo. Um, Visually, it was horrible. It was just bad. And I pretty much had almost written MK off. All my buddies and I, we just kind of wrote it off. And I was like, well, I guess this was the last hurrah for it. But then about, you know, a couple of years, like three years later, next thing you know, we see in the magazine, we see uh, articles for it, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. And when I saw how it looked, I went, hey, that looks pretty good. My buddy, on the other hand, still wrote it off. He's like, it's going to be some old bullshit, dude. Don't even bother. I bought it and I realized that it didn't play like Mortal Kombat anymore. It played like Tekken in a, in a sense. <laughs> It was like a like a poor man's Tekken, right? But to me, it brought the feeling of Mortal Kombat back, but with a play style that I could get, I can groove to. I was like, hey, this is not bad. And I was showing my buddy because I was using Kenshi. I was like, dude, look at the bullshit you could pull off with this guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I was getting like three airlifts and a whole bunch of stuff, and it was almost like a damn infinite combo that you can pull off with him. Like sixty or seventy percent of your life be gone with just one touch. And I dug it, you know, even though I knew it was broken. I was like, but it was way better than MK4. Visually, it looked good. Characters, I wasn't so impressed with some of the newer ones that they brought out because I wanted to see some of the more classic guys. But, you know, that game kind of reeled me in, right? And I wanted to know more about it. So I started searching the Internet for information about it. And, you know, I started, I found, you know, MK Online. And I saw that they were talking about, you know, 
uh, a tournament in Texas for the game. I don't know if you guys remember any of that, but there was a tournament held in Texas for Mortal Kombat Deadly, uh, yeah, Deadly, uh, 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 well, yeah, Deadly Alliance. And I was like, wow, dude, they're actually having offline tournaments for this thing. I couldn't make it, obviously. I was in California, but still, it, it intrigued me. But then that site grew over time, and it started getting more people. And then, you know, Deception, uh, yeah, Deception came out, and the site had changed over. I believe, what was it before? It wasn't. It wasn't always Mortal Kombat Online, was it? MK5, was it called? Yeah. yeah that's what it was. That's right. Yeah. MK5.org that's or something like that? Yes. So I went there and started conversing with some of the people that, you know, are still on, you know, Test Your Might today. Um, I got in good with um, Alexis09. Uh, there was another guy. I can't remember his name, but he was one of the guys that started our, our clan. So we're... Not to cut you off, but were you PS4 or Xbox then? With I started on Xbox. Okay. But there was a reason why I went to PS4, and we'll get into that uh, after my little history lesson. But awesome. There was a, there's a reason for that, and Dave, you're a part of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're a part of that reason. All right, but in any case, I, I got in good with people over there on on MK5.org, which eventually turned into you know going on to MK Online. And that's where I'm at, MKF30. You know, he's a great guy. Have you guys spoken with him? Not on here, but, I mean, we, we've been, you know, conversing with him on the forums for years. Uh, everyone knows who MKF is. Yeah, anytime you get a chance to hear him do his impressions, you got it. I have heard about that. I just haven't, you know, uh, actually heard them, like, one-on-one. But I've heard that he does some pretty uh, neat uh, voices. You wouldn't believe what he can do. It's unbelievable. I'm surprised. I, I'd be shocked if he doesn't have work. But in, in any case, um, so that's where I kind of got my beginnings getting on to, uh, you know, the online scene with uh, the people that are, you know, still some of them are still on Test Your Might. And then especially when Deception came out, when that be, when that was online, that's when that's when it started. That's when, you know, the whole the, the world, the universe basically opened up for me because now I could play this game against people, didn't have to travel and you know i was able to enjoy the hell out of it so and i started really focusing on it and i started playing with melina who initially was said to be low tier and i was like oh, that's all i needed to hear i love playing low tier characters and making them great and pissing people off that's that's my claim to fame and i've always done that in every every freaking fighting game i've ever played i will choose a fucked up character that nobody uses and try to make it good <laughs> but yeah so, so that was just now. What what game were you talking about, Melina? And so Melina, that I I started using Melina in Deception. Okay, because so, she wasn't in. Uh, wait, she was not in Deadly Alliance. Okay, so, I got my games messed up there. Okay, Lee May was in there, and I kind of tried to substitute Lee May for Melina, and it didn't work out. Although in Deception, she was good. She would she had some nasty ass juggles in, in Deception, but yeah. When the when the online scene came out for Deception, that's when it just exploded for me. I was blown away. Number one, I was surprised with how smooth the online was for the Xbox. It was really, it wasn't that bad. Although the properties changed for the game, you know, you do a, a, a floor bounce and they bounce 15 feet in the air. You know, it was a little different than it was when you played offline, but, you know, it was workable. And, you know, I started really conversing with people online. You know, we had our microphones. I was able to talk to people, ran in a bunch of very special people online, special by meaning assholes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, when you play online, you're going to run into that. You know, I had some people who were very racist, unfortunately, had those guys. I don't even know how the hell they knew I was black, to be honest with you. <laughs> I have no idea, you know, you know, but in any case, they would say all kinds of crap to me. And I was like, that's uh, that's great. But in any case, more people that I played against were, were super friendly, you know. Good. You know, we were able to learn from each other. We taught each other stuff, especially when I got to to know Alexei, who was, in, in, the, in the beginning, he was whipping my ass in this game. <laughs> I couldn't even touch him. But after a while, we know, he started to, te- you know, kind of teach me about certain things. And I was like, oh, okay. So we started getting good. And after a while, I was able to give him a run for his money. And in some cases, take the sets. So, you know. And that's that's kind of how I got started in that area. Yeah, I do want to add, if storms, if you don't mind, is that uh, yeah, absolutely. This is something we haven't really talked about 
lot of Xbox at that time definitely had better online gameplay than you know than what we had on the PS4 in terms of you know being more similar to uh, offline also in terms of stability the connections were better um, I think that should be mentioned nonetheless the game like were still in comparison like if you take for example Darius 3 back in the day which is like a mid launching overhead which mm-hmm. was his main tool used if you know you mix it up with throws or whatever the lows if you do that offline if somebody blocks that move you cannot move for like 30 you know frames it's really really noticeable o- online you can almost machine gun that so <laughs> so they're different yeah so they, we haven't really talked about too much about the difference and now it's probably not the time but I think that's something that people, you know, should be aware of because they think, you know, oh yeah, I know when Storms made that threat, you know, who wants to play it offline? I'm, just, I'm thinking to myself, you guys don't know what you're <laughs> setting you're yourself right. up, yeah, up for you're because right. the game may not play anything that you, you know, f- from what you remember, you know, it's definitely like, you know, characters are a lot, lot, lot more unsaving, you know, in what they do. That is absolutely correct. Absolutely. And you're right. You're right. He's right about the differences between us quickly. He's right about the difference between the online between the two systems. When I jumped over to PS2, I noticed it immediately. So that that is a thing. And the first thing I think of is maybe because it was you know free PlayStation or network. But I mean that that's something that's right. that anyone could throw out there. It just it. But that, there's no really fact behind that. But I guess the fact is that you know uh, Xbox was better. Um, and I'll just take your word for that because I've never really uh, played Xbox Live. Um, so mm-hmm. one thing you mentioned on with the the whole clan thing. So um, Master Malone, which one were you in? Re- refresh my memory. Was it uh, Outworld Gods? Nope. It was uh, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. That's right. Wow. <laughs> okay. So t- okay. So tell me about that because like that that's another one of those uh, clans from back then that um, was like very dominant yeah we we did our we did our work back in the day um definitely i was approached i don't remember why i can't remember the lead's name i his, cannot malone his name yes. is, was bombs fist something yes bombs and fists he was, right yeah he was it was uh he was this guy it was alda god you and alexi that's right only only four freaking guys and uh, right. wow yeah yeah. Yep. I got noticed by him. Uh, basically, I'd fought him online, and I fought him basically to a standstill with a number of his characters versus just my Molina. And he got on the mic and said, because he normally didn't talk on the mic, he got on the mic and said, holy shit. He said, you're the only person that I've faced this entire week that I could not dominate. And he goes, I did take the set but I couldn't dominate you. And I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, that's good. He said, because I'm putting together a team. He goes, you know, all these people on this Mortal Kombat online, they're talking a lot of shit and they're forming all these uh, these clans. And he goes, I want to put together a clan that's going to fuck them all. And I was like, really? And you want me to join it? And he said, <laughs> fuck yeah. He said, if you did that to me, I can only imagine what you're doing, doing to everybody else. And I was like, all righty then, let's do it. So he added me to the group. And next thing you know, I find out he's annexed Alexei into it. I was like, good shit, because I'd faced Alexei a number of times and had a hard time against that guy. You know, he actually, you know, when we fought, he would use Scorpion a lot. And he would do a lot of those just messed up 50-50s that Scorpion had yeah. with his <laughs> freaking overhead to the spear to all kinds of step you know sidestep to reset the whole thing you know what i'm talking about yeah four to one yep you got into that mix up it was a wrap but i was able to get out of some of that stuff and then hit him with my own melina because her standing four uh when she was in her uh her second stance was godlike oh yeah and yeah it was yeah so i was like you got that i got mine let's play we play this game come on buddy so we started you know we we go back and forth and, you know, he, when I found out that, you know, Alexa was part of it, I was like, dude, we're, we're good. And then Aldegod, oh my God, playing against <laughs> that guy, 
you guys know, man. You play against that guy, you're gonna know. Yeah. His he was ridiculous. I had a really tough time trying to play that guy, but he apparently he felt that I was good enough to not quit. You know, after a match or two, because I would give him a hard time, and then sometimes I would take some sets. I was like, all right. So playing against those those guys really elevated my game plan, and we would constantly practice against each other just to get good. And then once we felt we were ready, we went out there and we did some stuff. And each time we were try- we were trying to take names, and we're like, oh, I got this guy. We'll check him off. And then uh, the lead would go back online and name the heads that we we severed. So <laughs> you would name them off. And I was so like, Al- all right. So, so Aldega was actually uh... – because he was also, I think, TKO after that. But he was originally actually in that clan with yours. With he you? was. He was. Oh, okay, all right. Because I yeah, do he... remember, um, I don't know if you, do you remember Yeo? Right Hell now? yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. Because he was, I remember you guys were like, oh, is this peaceful clan? And he would just come out of nowhere and he would disrespect your name. He was like the four seamen. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. They're like, yeah, they're like, dude, what are you doing? They're like, they're not even talking shit to us. Just let him be. And he's just like, <laughs> hey, it was good though. I, I give him his props. I fought him. So I thought it was freaking hilarious, but yeah. Yeah, he was. You know, but that was the times, man. We talked. We talked shit, even to the point to where you know, I know we were super peaceful, but after a while, you know, we did start saying some shit. So I was like, all right, I'll jump in on this shit. Fuck it. Yeah. You know? So now, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. So it was it was bombs and fists that recruited you and started it, correct? Yes. So now, wasn't there a Doomsday of NYC part of that too, though? Doomsday. That's another guy. Was, that, I think that's the one guy. Doomsday. Yeah, that's that, the one. It was, that, it was Doomsday. Yep. Oh, so yep. it wasn't bombs that's and fists. You're right. It was Doomsday. Okay, yep. so it was yep. Doomsday of NYC. Okay, so it was Doomsday of NYC who started it. Got you, then got Lexi. And that's then right. all to God. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Now you didn't always go through by Master Malone, did you? Did you have another name back then? No. I had another name. They would always. It was I am your death. It was my. Game that's attack. right. Okay, okay. That's what I thought. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I am but your death. I, mm-hmm. Gotcha. But then I went to something that's a little easier to say, which is Master Malone, because that was my username for from uh, Mortal Kombat Online. Got it. Okay. Yep. Hey, hey, Malone. Uh, yes. Weren't you uh, better than you? Sure was, and you know why I did that? So here's a little history. Here's a little history, guys. So a lot of people were going on MKO. They were like, oh, yeah, I don't play with uh, free throws. I don't do this with, you know, uh, 50-50s all day. I don't do this this kind of crap with Baraicho. I was like, all righty then. We're going to find out. <laughs> I got myself a free Xbox Live, you know, uh, you know uh, membership thing that you can use for three months. And I was like, let me go ahead and find out what they really do. So I fought Bobby Blaze. I fought, uh, uh, what was it, Horrible Black. I fought, obviously, that guy owned up to his shit because he was dirty as fuck. Um, who else did I fight? I fought a number of people that said they didn't do free throws, and every single one of them did it to me. <laughs> and I was like, uh-huh. I don't, you better believe I beat the shit out of them, too. I was like, I'm not going to let them get away with this. I fucking came in there and tore them up. And then they, they were like, yeah. They come on back online, they are like, I fought this guy better than you. Who knows him? And I he was like, he uses Molina. And I was like, really? And they said, they said, Malone, I think he'd give you a run for your money. I'm like, really? I said, I don't know many people that play Molina to my level. I don't, I don't think he would. And then they're like, I don't know, man. He played a lot like you. I was like, well, let me find out. <laughs> but that was the whole reason why I created that account. And I actually started I, that account. Hey, Malone. Um, yes. So the memories I have playing um, I went to my brother's house. Mm-hmm. We were playing him. He was he was decent. Uh, he didn't go scorpion. So in the middle of the set, uh, my brother told man, this guy is crazy with Molina, and I was struggling my struggling with my with the, you know my sister in law. Yep. So I went there. That's my loan, you know, because I, I noticed obviously. So let, let me play him. So I started playing. Yep. So I start, I took. See, I, I I picked Boracho, yep. and then uh, we ended we ended the series, and then you you sent I don't remember if it was uh, uh, on the mic or you sent a message uh-huh. saying hey dude you play your bow plays like Gurchaps like that you just <laughs> left it at that you know like hey <laughs> I did because I, I was cause you, laughing 
<laughs> you know why? Because your play was so distinct, right? What was the what was the the, the flow chart variety show back in the day? Forward three, grab, sidestep, yeah. do right. some stuff. Yeah. So you didn't do that. You did a lot of stuff where you poked a lot, and you would poke and you would sidestep. You would do a, a low to trip you. It, it, yours was distinct. In fact, you were probably the purest bright show that I played. Everywhere, every now, and you would also limit yourself to like one or two free throws per match. And I remembered that. So when I played that, you know, that that account that I didn't recognize, I went, dude, <laughs> that's why I sent that message. I do remember that. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, I just remember now that you mentioned better than you. I just, because uh, I knew it was you, you know, at yep. the end that we, so, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I remember that night. I was there, and uh, I'm like, "Oh, let me play! Let me play!" <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! See, that's what I'm talking about. That was hella fun. It was a really good time. Right. So, yeah. so Malone, is there uh, fr from that era? Because again, there's a lot of history with deception that I, I I could I think I could talk all day about it. But is there any like certain stories from that era that maybe you haven't covered yet? That um, that uh, any like. Did you guys get into like any other clan wars or whatever else like from that time or any other like uh, stories that we have from the deception days from uh, U4? Yeah, well, there was definitely the clan war aspect of it. Um, I know we actually were getting into a lot of shit talking between clans from PS2 and Xbox, <clears throat> though we couldn't really face each other fully because some of those Xbox players did not, you know, have a PS2. Right. I, I did. And I volunteered to go over there specifically to fight one guy. And that guy's with us today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hunted, okay. I, I could... hunted down M2 Dave because I kept seeing him, you know, post on how, how good he was with fucking Dairu. And I was like, this, <laughs> like, this guy can't be that good. Because, you know, I'm thinking to myself, man, I faced all these Dairus. And, yeah, they're dirty and shit. But yeah, there's ways around it. I get on fucking PS2. He agreed to fight me. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to just put it out there. I got fucked up. And, there, <laughs> and the reason for that is, uh, Dave, do you remember what you called it? The machine gun drops? Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> you were rotating around the map, basically dropping. Every time you took a sidestep, you dropped. And I went, how the fuck is this guy doing this? I'm like, is this, is this just something that happens on PS2? But no, it was the way that the game was built. You know, it was like, hey, it, you were supposed to have a cooldown period after a, a, a tombstone drop, but you circumvented that by sidestepping. So he was just going ham on me. My buddy was watching that, and he went, dude, we were cracking up. I, all I got to say, we were both laughing our asses off. He was like, man, you can't even move. I'm like, no shit, I can't, I can't fucking move. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do anything. So that was a lesson in like, okay, because remember we talked about how, you know, how good they were. And I was like, well, damn, it hit me that time. I was like, well, maybe PS2 guys really are this fucking good, you know? So maybe I, you know, maybe I bit off more than I could chew. So I started to, to hang around the PS2 a lot more than I did on the Xbox at that point. And I basically basically became a, a PS2 player at that point. You know, I'd frequent, I would go back to the Xbox to check it out and see how things were going. But I hung out on the PS2 because, to M2 Dave's point, they were somewhat stronger. And I don't know if it's because they had more players. I don't know what it was. But for the average game that I played, I had a tougher time. And I think it had something to do with the fact that there were more players on there that were learning a, little bit, a lot more for, from each other. But that's not to say that the top guys from Xbox were not as good as the PS2 top guys. Right. They were pretty strong. It's just that you would frequently run into somebody who knew what the hell they were doing more often on the PS2 than you did on the Xbox. So we covered that. We covered that uh, um, like what two about three weeks ago in one of the podcasts too. That uh, PS2 had more competition, you know, like a tougher competition. So yeah. all of you guys were playing like pretty much all the time against great players. That's back right. In the Xbox back in the Xbox, it took forever to find another elite player. You it know, did. and I think it has to be uh, it has to be because uh, PS2 was free in Xbox. You needed to pay them. Yeah. Why it was like yeah. forty nine dollars per. Yeah. And and that's why you guys have um, better players, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that. 
because I felt it when I got there. When I got my ass handed to me the first time <laughs> by Dave, I felt it. And I was like, okay, that, <laughs> I got yeah, you. Keep, yeah, keep in mind, this is you know generally true for any competition is you know it only takes a couple of players and if those two or three players can you know level up everybody else you know by constantly playing them then you kind of improve everybody around you yeah uh obviously you know there has to be a the right mindset you know people you know they have to try hard and they have to be ready to learn and then, and then if you have that scenario then you can you know level up pretty quickly and i think that's kind of what we had mm -hmm. so at the end like people were you know there was like you know, I know people were like, yeah, we're not going to free throw, you know, and stuff like that. But then everybody was doing Like, people were just playing to win. You know, we knew the game wasn't very good, but we just played it and we leveled up very fast. I think that's, you know, along, you know, with the PS2, you know, online being, um, you know, free of fees and, you know, the yeah. amount of players that it attracted. Speaking of playing to win, that's another guy that I fought against quite a bit. Anybody else play against him? Well, he's, uh, yeah, he man, he's from my scene. I mean, you don't. We didn't. I don't think we played Deception back in the day, but uh, uh, playing to win or, or mad, as I call him, he's uh, he lives like 30 minutes away from me. So that's kind of how I met him. Mm. Uh, you know, how Chap talks about all the people he's met. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. throughout you know throughout his and you know throughout his MK career. That's you know how I met him. But he yeah. was mostly um, kind of like a Armageddon guy and less of a Deception. I don't know how much Deception he played. He didn't play as much, but I do remember him from Armageddon. Yeah, he's that's his game that he was playing. I know he was playing that a lot. That's kind of how he started his, you know, yeah. fighting game career. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, he came he came to the scene late in MKD. Uh, I remember uh, he, but he was like like you know popular in uh, Armageddon. He was like one of the active players in Armageddon. Yeah, he was. Actually, yeah, he played that, that a lot. Speaking of meeting the players from the from the community on. on forums the only person that i've actually met in person uh has been was pick of the hut i met him at, e, at uh, evo and you know it was a long it was uh maybe about three years ago you know i was yeah. like oh, yeah i met him and i was like wow dude it's it's, it's good to finally meet somebody from the site <laughs> yeah awesome. yeah i also wanted to note that since we're talking about mkd and you know the mk alliance days or yeah <laughs> alliance armageddon days uh, mm -hmm. That I uh, want to give a, a shout out to Conqueror again. I think we mentioned him on I think every podcast is just fitting, but um, he's been uploading a lot of the videos from that time. That again, like no one has recordings other than him, just because he he did it and he hosted this stuff. But he's been uh, uploading those videos. He's probably still doing it just because how many he has. But he's if anyone wants to check out. Um, now I don't know all the names that are included in it, so it's not going to be like all of us, of course, but. Um, or it could be. I'm not sure. He has a lot of he has a lot of content. But on his, uh, if you just go to YouTube and type in uh, Conquer, go to his channel. Um, he's got a lot of videos get to to upload and uh, a lot of stuff to to see and check out from back in you know two 2005 when again no YouTube or any of that stuff. So a lot of cool stuff to check out. So um, also I wanted to uh, since I was doing a lot of talking earlier, Dave between Dave and uh, Gertrude, do you have anything that you wanted to ask uh master malone um before uh we go a little further here no i'm good i think you should ask him about if you don't mind you know about the e3 i think that's kind of um, yeah i was getting I, to that yeah, i just wanted to yeah, i wanted to see if you yeah. guys wanted to cover anything else um no i'm, I'm, I'm prior. Good. i definitely want to hear about the e3 stuff awesome so i have only one question go ahead. i have one question before we move on we move on uh so we know and and you pretty much said uh, malone that the best player in the uh, PS2 was um, was Dave. So yeah. what about the best player in the Xbox? We I know who who the player was, but I, mm -hmm. I'd like to hear from you. From me, damn, right. that was a that's a toss up, man. It's there was there's man, there are two people that come to mind. Give one me two names. One of them was B and R. The other one is easy to beat. <laughs> okay. We 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 there you go. We we I'm, I'm pleased now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a, we we also talked about this uh these two guys um um about a month ago. Uh yeah. they were just machines. Yeah. And and I believe in in, in deception was BNR. Yes. And uh, late in deception 
and all Armageddon was easy to beat. It was just oh, like God. easy to. It was just. It was just a like seeing him play was just. It was just a show. Yeah, you know, he, this guy could. This guy could <laughs> random. This guy could random yes, and could. still beat people. Yeah. He would fuck you up with anybody. I mean, it. Only thing you could do is laugh when you get kicked <laughs> by Kai. He would come in with Kai and meat and fucking wreck your shit. There's nothing you could do about it. I was like, oh my god, he's beating my ass with meat. And I'm like, oh man, I, I, I'm starting to question myself here. Am I really, <laughs> am I really this good or am I really this bad? What the hell is this guy just godlike? He knew the game inside and out. I. In fact, I would say hands down, an, an overall player, he was probably the best with, in, as a generalist, with any given character. Every, most of us were pretty much specialists. He was a generalist, but he can hang in and screw you up with just about anybody in that roster. And it was sick. I, I couldn't believe it. So right. my, my hat goes off to him. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good. Bring gotcha. it the scene and that's a that's a goal that i have so well, let's see if i can if i can make it and also bnr if i can find them online oh yeah yeah i i've been looking also uh kind of along with good chap with trying to find some of these older players that's actually how i was able to locate uh quick 1320 but um yeah with uh easy to beat I believe I found his YouTube channel. I, I posted some comments on it. Hopefully he'd see him. But I mean, and same with uh, Alexia Nine. But um, again, <laughs> the the videos on there were like twelve, you know, years old and no no activity. So it's it's kind of like uh, maybe maybe someday they'll see that. But uh, chances are probably slim. But um, well, Alexia is still on my friends list, and it, every now and then it shows activity. He's still playing on Xbox. Oh so. wow! I just sent him a message and. Uh, see what he's up to yeah i'll send him a message awesome so uh so now i guess we'll kind of get into uh the the big e3 story that i want you to kind of start from like the, the grassroots of the whole thing and just take us through that because uh, gertrap was the first one to, to mention um and, and credit you for that on one of our last podcasts and i got very intrigued about hearing that we, I know we, we scratched the surface on it earlier in the podcast, but let's, let's kind of get into it if you don't mind. Sure, let's go. So it basically all started with the fact that we all knew that there was tremendous amounts of problems with the game, with Deception that we were playing. We knew 50-50s were bullshit. We knew free throws were bullshit. We knew a lot of the stuff was just was bad, right? But we, we powered through it anyway because the game overall was an enjoyable, it was an enjoyable experience. However, um, I'd gone to E3 a number of times and, you know, I kind of put it out there that, hey, guys, I I get into E3 all the time. So if you want, if you want to compile a bunch of information about what's going on with this game, I'd be happy to share it. And when you know it, everybody just started going, what? They were taken by surprise. They were like, yeah. So they jumped at the opportunity to to start feeding with this information and the enormous amount of work that went into what they were doing just it, it, i mean we accumulated this over weeks at a time it wasn't just like over the course of a day it was weeks that we were putting in effort to figure out what it was that we didn't like what it was that we did like what should stay what should go and people were compiling videos of stuff you mentioned conqueror conqueror put together videos of infinite juggles that you can do and infinite combos that you can get away with. And now this is for uh, deception or Armageddon, just to clarify. It was for deception because okay. at the time, the only game that was Mortal Kombat online was deception. Sure. So we had no other outlet for any kind of MK, but they were able to compile a lot of this information over the time that we had played it. <clears throat> We'd been playing it for the better part of a year and a half. Right. So we pretty much knew what was wrong with it. And, a lot of these guys just came in with like mountains of, of text, information, video, all this stuff. I mean, it was amazing what was what was put together. In fact, I put it together. Uh, it, it almost didn't fit on the CD that I burned it to. It was a lot of information because there's a lot of, uh, you know, MP4 files, a lot of a uh, lot of text. It was, it was crazy <clears throat> what people put together. And I, I you know, I, I felt like you know what, I, I better make sure my ass gets to E3 or else I'm going to let these people down. And I made sure 
that I wasn't going to let him down. I wasn't going to get sick. I had my I already had my ticket. I was like, I can't get sick. Even if I am sick, I'm going anyway. Even if I'm <laughs> throwing up in front of the you know the the, the midway booth, looks like ah, here you go, here's your information. But you know we you know we actually toiled over some of that information to make sure that it was accurate, make sure that you know it was properly rep, you know represented in the you know the descriptions that we gave. You know we we talked about all this stuff that really would make it special if they could fix it and adjust it, and for the next game you know, put this in. I don't know who, who recommended, somebody recommended air combos in one of those things that I read. I don't remember who that was. Oh my. We all know how that turned out. Uh. It turned out so hot. I don't know if they actually read the text. Yeah, don't <laughs> say her name. Don't say her name. <laughs> yeah, I, gotta, yeah, I don't want to have that person crucified if I can remember it. But, That's right, because yeah. that person is going to get blown up even after all these years. <laughs> but believe me, guys, somebody put that in there. I was like, air combos, and I went, my first thought was Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Mm, I'm like, yeah. you put air combos in a game, that's automatic infinite. But that was just me. I didn't want to say anything, but I was like, well, let's see what it go, where, they, where it goes. But so I put, I compiled all that, that information onto a CD, packaged it all up nice and neat, typed up a, a you know, nice little letter to who, you know, who would make concern wow. about how the community got together for the love of this game and wanted to pitch in to you know offer our support for something that we felt was a gift from them we wanted to give something back sure and i made sure to type that up and also you know make sure that they it was felt that it wasn't just some old bullshit that i was bringing to them it was actually hey we like what you guys are trying to do we want to help too right i don't want to just throw something at them that says hey your game's a bunch of bullshit this is what you should have did i didn't right. want to come up like that and I don't think anybody in the community wanted to come off like that either. So I made pretty sure that it was a nice write up and, and organized all the, the information. I had put headlines for each one of the things. I kind of refactored some of the the writing and put like the topics because some of the stuff I got had no topic. It sounds Other like ones, you did it like a resume. It really it does. Was. It was a resume of, hey guys, fix this shit. <laughs> but, but that's what it was. It was a resume of that. But also a resume of, hey, guys, we really like the fact that you guys brought Mortal Kombat back to the point to where we as a community can join in and group. And it's also formed, you know, a community like we have bonds, right? Even across platform, we had bonds. You know what I mean? People knew who each other were from different consoles because of this game. So the support that we wanted to give back was to keep doing that, to keep it going. So when I put all that together and got myself up in the morning... You know, I, I spent a, a lot of time putting it together. I got up maybe about five hours after I put that shit together. And I basically went off to E3, got in there. The first place I wanted to go, I didn't care about any of that other stuff going on. The first place I hit was Midway. So as <laughs> soon as they let us in, I saw people in there. It was a crowd of people. They actually had Armageddon on a number of different screens in there. And I was like, oh, wow, this looks like an arcade game. It really looks good. Found out that it was the, uh, the Xbox version running at 720p so that's why it looked really good and i was like wow why does this one look so good they're like oh that's the xbox version i went oh oh shit i said well ps2 fans are gonna be pissed when they see this one <laughs> in any case i started asking around for staff i was like hey you know what i said where's the staff for the for the game i said i have something for them that the community over at mortal kombat online has put together for them and then you know it turned out i was talking to uh what was his name? Was Paulo? It, I think no, it was Apollo first. I think it was either it was Steve. Steve, I can't Baron? remember. That's right. Steve Baron. So, okay. so I talked to him and I remember talking to him about, you know, how much the game looked good and all that stuff. And I said, Hey guy, I said, you know, we got together and on this Mortal Kombat online. Are you familiar with it? He said, Yeah. I said, Well, we got on there, we compiled a bunch of information about the previous title that we wanted to see if you guys can resolve with this title. And he went, what? I said, yeah. And I broke out that CD with all the, the write-up and all that stuff. It was a nice, you know, vanilla envelope. And he was like, <laughs> that's awesome. You mean this is a lot of, like, basically beta test and, you know, test information and feedback? I went, it's a ton of feedback and videos. And he went, wait right here. So he went to the back. About five minutes later, he comes out with Paulo. He starts talking to Paulo, and I don't know what the hell he told him. 
But then Paulo's eyes looked at me. I'll never forget his face. He looked and went, are you serious? I went, yeah. He went, may I? I went, yeah. He took the, he took it. And he was like, man, thank you. He was like, this is awesome. And I was like, yeah, you're welcome. I said, and I kind of talked to them a bit about what it was that we found, you know, all the stuff about, you know, the online properties being changed, the 50 fifties being, you know, a problem, free throws and whatnot. And, no chance for escape. You had no countering system. None of that stuff was there. So I said, it made it to the point where if you guessed wrong once, you were in the mix. You weren't getting out of that. And he, 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 they acknowledged that that was kind of a thing and they knew about it, but they, you know, it cost so much to make updates at the time. If you wanted right. to push yeah. it, sure. it true. cost you a shit ton of money to do it. We might as well just crank out a new game and do it at that point. So I was like, yeah, I get it. So I said, and he's like, dude, he said, this is fucking awesome. And I went, you're welcome, man. And after that, he proceeded to kick my ass with Nightwolf <laughs> <laughs> in Mortal Kombat Armageddon. While we were playing, I went, hey, I guess this is the thanks I get. But in any case, they, they were blown away by the fact that we did that. He actually went to the back and he got Ed Boon to come out wow. and let him know what I did. And I was like, it's not just me, guy. I said, you got to remember it. Hundreds of us on this site that put this together. I made sure that they weren't just thinking I did this because we're like, no, don't give me credit for this. Give credit to the people who put work in, you know, into the videos and into the writing. I said, I added a couple things. You know what I added? I added, I wanted a parry system. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I added that and they put it in there to, you know, but that's, you know, that's what I added. But, you know, Ed Boone came out and we talked about it and he's like, he goes, wow, I can't believe this is, something that the community did. He goes, I feel honored. I was like, wow, this is, I felt like, man, I wish everybody could be here talking with him and listening to him Sure. because he was very genuine in his, in his words. And he was pretty humble. I, I mean, that guy is, is like one of the most humble developers that I've, that I've spoken to. It's like, he feels almost like as if he doesn't deserve the credit that he gets for some of the, for the work that he's put in these games. And I was like, wow, dude, this guy is really like, just blown away by the fact that we're supporting him. So that's how I got that picture that I took with uh, Ed Boone that day. I was like, hey, you mind taking a picture, man? He was like, sure. And then somebody took my phone and snapped that picture. And I was like, that's great. But yeah, they were so thankful for that information. And I I think they probably still remember that if you asked them about it. They're oh, probably definitely, gonna... definitely. Yeah, that, that, would, that would not be something that they would forget. Absolutely. Yeah. But that right there, it that was the beginnings of what I consider to be, you know, how we grew as a community to what we are today, based on the fact that we poured our, our hearts into this game. As, as, you know, messed up as some of the mechanics were, we still cared enough about it to do that, you know. And I can't say the same for some of the other games out there. I don't know. Maybe maybe they do. But, you I know, think... we took No, go ahead. Sorry. We took it to the developer personally. You understand what I mean? And we was like, "Hey, let's let's see what we can do to keep this going." Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think over time, more and more the developers seem to have uh, really grasped their online community. I mean, especially now, but in previous years, like going into MK9, um, I remember when, of course, when Hector uh, Hector Sanchez was still part of Another Realm. You know, when he popped on. Uh, test your might back then and just like out of nowhere and i had to actually look at his account <laughs> in the admin panel to make sure it wasn't some like you know person trying to impersonate him and i was like holy shit that's the real that, 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 that's hector and yeah. uh it, it was it was it was pretty wild it was very surreal um but yeah like back then it was kind of like kind of waving your hand around like are, are they listening and that was just uh the, the fact that you know, even you asking like, "Hey, do you know the site?" And of course they do. They just some of them, uh, you know, they. I'm sure they browse all the forums out there. Does they, they just don't always comment? They um, did. You reminded me of something actually. Sure. When I asked when I asked them about, "Do you know that site?" and they said, "Of course they do." They actually frequented the site. And they actually all had. They actually had somebody who crawled that site. Maybe it was Hector, but they didn't tell me who it was. They had somebody crawling the site to pick for feedback. To figure out what was going on so they had people crawling it so you know the stuff that i got sent via email or whatnot they didn't get that but they were crawling it so 
they they actually did do that. Yeah, I do want to add if um, also the fact that because you know a lot of the audience who's probably listened to this, they probably will not you know because they're not they may not be familiar with Deception or Armageddon, but they should know that those games were really not designed with the competitive player in mind. Like at any, you know, because you <laughs> I want to be honest with our you know with our audience. Yes. Those games are not designed for the, for any kind of competition because they were extremely broken, poorly made. Uh, yeah. Even after the community, you know, uh, worked very hard and Malone did his thing, you know, uh, even Armageddon turned out to be a huge mess just because of you know, after check again, I think it was check might have been somebody else that discovered the, uh, you know, the, all the aerial infinite nonsense. The loops, know, yeah. Still, the loops, there were still some throw loops and there were still some, you know, infinite combos, but the overall balance was better. Yeah. You know, keep in mind that game had like a lot of characters. So it had all of them in it. <laughs> yeah, it had all, yeah, exactly. So had all of them in it. So, I, you know, when I talk to Tom and Rio and they, you know, late, like just recently they've been playing Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, you know, before this uh, stress test came out, you know, just yesterday. And they consider that the best 3D game, but, uh, you know, people should be aware that those games are not really that good at all. I mean, it, those are not even, you know, as good as MK9. <laughs> it doesn't like balance or anything, really. People should be entirely be aware of that. Yeah, and, and to your point with that, it, it's, it is for us just because, again, that that was the our competitive games. That's what took us online. And we have just that it's just it's a lot of sentimental value to it, uh, the memories that we have. But there's also the stepping stones of how we are here today. Um, from, you know, I remember, you know, I didn't, I never talked to Gurchat back then or, you know, associated with him at all back then, but I remember seeing his name on the forums, uh, M2Day of you, of course, um, Master Berlin, uh, again, I remember seeing your name, but again, we, we go back so far that to us, you know, it almost didn't matter if the game was good in a way, just because we have... You know, we we had our own rules to an extent back then that we wouldn't we wouldn't do this, we wouldn't do that. Even though, again, yeah. um, some of it we'd kind of slip out of, and we actually would do it. But that was what we had, and uh, just uh, again to Dave's, Dave's point, they they might not have been the greatest games by any stretch of the imagination, but for us back then, it's what we had, and we make the we made the best of it just because we loved Mortal Kombat. You know, obviously we still do. Um, so, uh, it, Dave and Gurchap, do you have anything else that you want to um, add? Um, I just wanted to add, like, pretty much what you said. Um, even though those games were not great, at that time, they were great for us. Because we got to pretty much meet, you know, each other. I knew, I knew about you, about Dave. Obviously, I knew Malone, you know, by playing him and everything so and i believe like the the dna of this mk community come from those days right there because uh people like us didn't let it die back in the day so it's not that it just happened now that uh, mk is, is you know it's a little more popular in tournaments it just happened from those days we uh i feel like as a community we've done a great job you know trying to keep these games alive and i uh, just looking forward for this new no MK game. Hopefully, it brings me back the old memories, and I hopefully enjoy enjoy the gameplay. Absolutely. So, with that said, thanks, chap. With mention MK11, um, Master Malone. I wanted to get some of your, uh, you know, feedback and thoughts on the game. Um, if you have any for us. For MK11? Yeah, basically your, your thoughts on it, any characters that have been confirmed so far that you're excited for, and even any ones that you're hoping for be you know DLC or whatnot. I, first, I'll start off by saying DLC, Molina. Come on. <laughs> I, I need that. That's, that's part of my DNA. I mean, I substituted Molina in a few things uh, for a few characters back in the day when she wasn't there, but there's no substitute for that. So NRS, if you're listening... Melina, in any case, my impressions of the game are pretty positive. I'll be honest with you. The first thing I noticed, it's not wild and frenzic. And it's very much like the pacing of it is so much more controlled. Um, the, the, the fact that the neutral game has been like just, no, you know, no pun intended, amplified to the point where I can actually figure out what I'm doing and I'm not going to get run over 
like a, by a train of, of Liu Kang, you know, strings to kill me. So the way that it looks, it, it, the, and, uh, and I know a lot of people hate this comparison, but to me, it, it, the pacing seems more Street Fighter V-ish or Street Fighter in general than it does like an MK game. It seems like it's way more controlled, and I, and I love it. It's not that I, that I prefer one game or the, over the other, but this is what I've been waiting for. And I can't wait to get in there and start playing mind games. And it doesn't have to do with 50-50s. It's all about, I can poke you. I can get you to make a mistake. I can, you know, make you whiff something. And I punish the hell out of you for it. I'm not just going to sit there and, and be like, okay, it's, an, it's a full-on guessing game. First, you got to, you know, in most, most of the games that I play, it's all about poking and prodding somebody till they get frustrated to the point where they're going to make a mistake. Then I capitalize on it, right? I can't do that in MKX. Although I had a ton of fun with playing Goro, because I didn't really do all the, the run combos in that game. I'll be honest with you; those combos were more like uh, it, it seemed more like a chore for me than it was like fun. So I didn't get into the run combo aspect of it. So I'm not gonna miss the run because I hardly ever did it in that game anyway. So for me, MK11 is perfect. I, I'm good to go with that. Now, as far as like the uh, the characters that I'm looking forward to, man. I'm going to play Scarlet. I'm going to put that out there. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, her zoning's too strong. Eh, yeah, I don't think it's that strong, but it looks good. And she looks awesome as a character. The The tools that she has to use, like the, the length of that scythe, that looks great. I can't wait to get in there and start mixing fools up with that. Because, you know, it just, just the overall aesthetic of the game, too. I mean, it's amazing what they've done with re-engine. And they modified it to the point to where it's almost unrecognizable. I don't even think you can call it Unreal 3 anymore. It's definitely not using Unreal 4. But it looks absolutely amazing to me. So I can't wait to kind of get my hands on that and really dig into how the play mechanics are. Another thing that I don't see a lot of... I don't know if you guys have been seeing the uh, the, the, the stream uh, bits on YouTube where they, they kind of uploaded it. Nobody's using the flawless block. And nobody's using the short hops at all. Those are a couple things that I'm definitely going to get into using. Uh, I'm a third strike player. Love the parry system in that game. And I've seen things in this game that I can mimic with that 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 flawless block system. Well, so, actually, speaking of that, I encourage, I'm sure most people will see this on Test Your Might, but um, Sonic Fox apparently, uh, well, he didn't post on Test Your Might, but somebody said, you know, what he said and put it on Test Your Might. I encourage people to check that out on Test Your Might. And, He's very critical of the <laughs> of the uh, flawless blocking. And really? Yeah, he says it's not. He says it's way too overpowered. Because like, every string where there's a gap, you can apparently maybe uh, almost like do like an option select block. Mm -hmm. And then you know when you if you do the flawless block, then that string that has any gap, you know, you can get launched with uh, you know up two, which is kind of, you know the same thing as your wake up. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of what he was saying. So just to go to your point again, uh, seems like so. At least he, I don't know. You know, he also mentioned some that they're not really, they don't really like that. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll comment on that. It sounds like Sonic yeah. Fox is not really a third strike fan. <laughs> 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 what you what you just mentioned right there is part of the meta of third strike, right? If yeah. I know yeah. You do a, a set of you know. Uh, strings in that game and i'm like okay at this point there's a there's a it's an opportunity to red parry nobody hardly ever red parries in that game but you'll know that okay you hit 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 there oh it's going to be a low hit next boop i got you and i'm gonna i'm gonna punish you for it that's why in that game it didn't always boil down to who could parry the best it's like you can outthink think the other person the best if that person knew that a parry was going to come they shortened that combo and they threw him instead so there's a lot of mind games that will be played in this game at the highest level. <clears throat> Mark my words, when you start seeing people actually use that flawless block system the way that it should be used. Um, I know that they're critical of it. I'm going to enjoy the fuck out of it. I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> no, Malone, did you have a, have you had a chance to try the, the stress test? Or... I have not. Sadly, I have not. I just, I wish I did, because that's the first thing I was going to go to is is just FB the shit out of people. I'm like, oh, you want to try to chip me out? And I did notice that when you do Flawless Block, I haven't noticed any damage come out of there. I know that they said 
it's minimal. I'm like, I didn't notice the life bar move at all. Yeah, yeah, it's it's no damage. I uh... so, yeah. <clears throat> so that right there is a game changer for MK specifically because the threat of chip is huge, right? Just right. from normal. and this changes everything. If you get good at that, you are going to become just unstoppable in a lot of in a lot of cases, or just very fucking annoying in the game. So that that's I'm good with that. I'm totally good with that. I'm playing. I play Third Strike whenever I get the chance, especially when I was at my other job. We had game systems upstairs. That's all we did was play fighting games. And when we when we played Third Strike, it was it was on. Anybody who was brave enough to get on that game, <clears throat> you either knew what you were doing or you were fucking crazy. So <laughs> that's how we got that one going. So you got you either got good at the parries, good at the mind games, or you just sat and watched. So I was like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yeah, screw that. But yeah, I'm I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to get as good as I can with this system and, and try to annoy people the best way that I can. So there we go. Well, Storms, have you had a chance? I know you mentioned in the private conversation that you had, that you, uh, have ac- that you had access to a code as well. What are your comments, if any? I actually haven't even had a chance to get into it yet. I have it downloaded, okay. but I have to... Uh... I have to renew my my online subscription. I'll be doing it tonight. I'm I'm gonna be test, testing it out tonight and trying it out. Um, but yeah, I, I did not expect to get a code, but I did. Um, and uh, honestly, if I wouldn't have redeemed it, uh, Master Balloon, I'd be actually giving it be giving it to you because uh, uh, I, I definitely would have. Now, what what with that being said, what what system are you gonna be playing the game on? I'll be playing it on both. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Damn. I kind of wish I didn't redeem it, but anyway, uh, yeah. If if I didn't, it, w- it would have been going to you. Um, so uh, so MP Dave, uh, Chap, um, Malone, any other comments that we want to add? Since we're gonna kind of wrap this up, we we kind of all agreed on making this about an hour long. The only thing, uh, and hold that thought. The only thing I want I want to mention. I want I wanted to mention it earlier was just the fact that when Malone was talking about the whole E3 experience and how cool it was that, you know, the, with the aerial combat being in um, Armageddon, as much as I did not like that, and I told that person just to keep their name quiet, <laughs> um, <laughs> it just, I, I, I just think that it's really awesome. That just shows that how much, uh, you know, whether you call it Midway or Netherrealm, how much they listened then and how much they still do listen. So I just wanted to throw that out there just because that, that's, that's awesome. But um, It was awesome. But yeah, with that, and not not just that, but the other ones, you know, from like the Perry system that you mentioned, um, mm-hmm. just all all those details. It's just, uh, and you know, honestly, I, I know you probably don't because it's been so many years. But it would have been so cool to have like a like any kind of copy or a photo of what you what you put together. But I, I know I'll be showing that the photo of you and Ed Boone that you uh, that you shared with us. So I'll be awesome. sharing that. Uh, but yeah, with that said, um, do either three of you have any? Uh, last words or thoughts that you'd want to add to the end here? I do actually. Go for it. So one of the things that I've noticed about our community is that when a new game comes out, people shun the previous title. Yes. And yeah. I'm getting in specifics here with, with Injustice 2, right? So to me, MK and Injustice 2 are totally different games. They, they have some similar aspects as fighting games do, but they're still different and they should have they're, they should have like a little bit of a community on both. So we as a community tend to kill our own games prematurely and don't let them flourish. And I'm just puzzled as to why that is. I, for one, will continue to play Injustice in addition to MK because I, I just like the way the game plays. And maybe it's just me, but if you notice Capcom and other communities, like if Capcom comes out with Street Fighter V, it didn't mean that the ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 guys were going to stop playing that game. Right. They continue to play it, and they have their community. And they also enjoy watching, playing Street Fighter V. I'm having a, tr- <clears throat> a hard time understanding why NRS can't do the same thing. NRS community. That's my, my thing, and I think that we can. It's just that there's something ingrained that we shouldn't. And I don't understand why. I think with that part of that is just that, you know, for example, myself, if uh, it just takes a few people to, to lead the way and to, to, to continue playing this game. And whether it's, you know, sometimes, you know, the big name players, like, for example, uh, whether it's a Sonic Fox or if it's one, one of us, that's what's 
playing the game to to kind of keep that the blood pumping for those games. I think sometimes that's all it comes down to. Like we can talk about it all we want, but until you know, maybe it's Tom Brady and Rio. Maybe they're uh, streaming it or um, uh, you know any players. I, th- I think it it definitely helps to have someone actually lead the way and not just not to speak of it, but to actually get into that game and then to start posting in the forums. That way, obviously, if that person isn't watching the stream or whatever else, that they're seeing some activity in like the injustice forums or MKX or whatever it may be. Um, I mean, that, that's kind of my, my feedback on that. It just sometimes it takes someone to uh, kind of lead the charge on that, but I, 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 I completely think, yeah. agree. I think our community is also a lot smaller than, you know, than the, uh, you know, than the, you know, you look at Street Fighters played all over the world, you know, even though sure. we, might, we, we may like MK better, that's just a fact. So, you know, they have a lot of, you know, overseas competition and, you know, all that stuff adds up to a game's popularity, which kind of leads into what Storm said. You know, if you have, you know, there was a thread on Test Your Mind, you know, who are the leaders of the community? Who are the voices? Well, you know, there's there are definitely some like him or not. You know, if they speak out, then maybe people are more likely to do certain things, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, you know, it's just unfortunate that it has to be that way. That's just my opinion on it and I'd, I'd love to see like we have two games that are supported at the same time you know perhaps maybe they would include some of the things that people wanted it in, to see in Injustice or an older version of MK if the next Injustice happens to be out so those are the kind of things that that I've often thought about and discussed with my friends and we all figured why wouldn't they want to keep this thing going yeah but, I'll have to before uh when I, I also want to hear from Gertrap too but uh uh, one thing I gotta mention is just the MK3 guys again. Just a shout out to them because Shaka, uh, uh, Drusus, all those guys that keep UMK3 alive. That, that's just like the uh, they 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 they've been going forever for on that, and and they can do, continue to do so. So just props to all those guys that keep that game alive. Definitely. So, chap, do you have anything uh, you want to add to the end here? Uh, no, not really. I'm just glad that I, this happened. Absolutely. I knew it was going to be a, a great call. Uh, I know that there is a lot of history, and in an hour we couldn't really cover the whole thing, but I, right. I feel like we did a good job. Yeah, Malon did a good job. And I want to, I mean, we as a site, we want to give a little giveaway for, you know, to the listeners. I was thinking about $10 GameStop gift card to the person who, who comes up with the answer. And I believe the question would be, huh, I've been thinking all this time, guys. Uh, <laughs> I know you mentioned uh, that. That's awesome. Right, right. Uh, okay, so the person, the member who tells us Masters Malone original gamer tag in Deception gets uh, $10 uh, GameStop gift card. I mean, I know that it's not much, but a ten dollar off MK11 is better than none. So hell yeah, hell yeah. Go ahead and go ahead and post uh, the original gamer tag, not better than you, the original. And um, I'll be uh, I'll be sending. I don't even know how much send the uh, the card or just a, a photo of the gift card with the number. I'll I'll, I'll figure it out. But uh, uh, we'll be giving this away. All right, and that's pretty much all I have, guys. That is fantastic. Thank you, Gertrap. Uh Yeah, I know you mentioned that. That's a, that's a, that was a cool idea. Um, it really is. So yeah, um, again, not something that we have we have to do or Gertrap has to do, but just wants to to kind of just keep it keep it fun. So anyway, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So Master Malone, again, thank you very much at, for uh, joining us with this. I know coordinating this, uh, as we mentioned earlier, was, it's it's <laughs> it's it's not easy to coordinate it, but uh, um, it was it was hell of a hell of a fun time um and also you know if we all got together again to discuss something else that if you guys want to throw some topics together more likely you know i'd be we'd be honored to have you on for additional podcasts too it's not like this is just a one and done thing so um just you know m2 dave master alone gertrap just thank you for your time and uh i guess we'll end it there yeah thank you so much thank you guys it was an honor being on thank you all right, guys. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Everybody have a good evening. Right, you too. Thank you. See you. Thanks. All right.